what do you make of Jesus is saying that everyone will be salted with fire? Well, that's a good one. And may I say that was the concluding part of me coming to believe that Jesus is truly the Savior of the whole world. I grew up in Christian fundamentalism, where only supposedly a handful of people are going to heaven, very, very few. As Jesus taught the way is straight and narrow, only a few there be who find it. And conversely, the way to hell is broad and wide as the gate, and many that enter in thereat. The problem is that has nothing to do with hell. It's talking about life on earth, uh, not hell. But the fundamentalists read hell into that passage of Scripture. So, I, as I studied this, this is like 15 years after seminary, I got out of horrible Christian fundamentalism, uh, you consider it fundamental, then I went to an evangelical seminary, so that was a big step up. They're still pretty conservative. They did still taught eternal punishment. Uh, so, uh, I learned, though, the important thing was I studied Hebrew and Greek, and especially Greek, to be able to study what Jesus said, what the New Testament teaches, not having to take someone's uh, word for the translation. And uh, I was told as a child, I'm given a King James Bible uh, about the time I was 10, 11 years, 12 years old, and told to always read the King James, always forever, because in the last days, they will change the Bible. They never said who they were, but I assume the mark of the beast, the beast and all those things that come with the uh, second coming of Christ and getting damned to hell forever. So anyway, I did grow up on the King James and memorized a lot of it, but I continued studying and studying the Greek text after seminary. And um, I kept a ledger during that time. It had a line marked down the middle. One side had verses that seemed to teach eternal damnation, and the other side was verses that seemed to teach uh, universal salvation. And uh, I was not sure of it, but I started at about 80% saying today I'm 80% confident. Now, it didn't say sure because... 80% is not sure. And you can go all the way from 80, 85, 90, 95, which I did just saying, I'm this confident today. But I went then in intervals from 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. I'm uh, confident, 99% confident, the Bible teaches universal salvation, but I was still not sure. So I continued reading and studying, and then I read Mark 9.49, again, which I'd read before. Some of that didn't register. It just went with all the hell for damnation teaching I'd had for so many years. But it hit me that this cannot be literally true. And I was taught as a child, and I even asked in church one time, if the fire of hell could be a different kind of fire. I was probably only about 12 years old at the time. I didn't know the word metaphorical then, but that's what I was getting at. And the pastor said, no. The Bible says fire, and I believe it means fire, meaning literal fire. Man, I just was really scared about that, so I shut up. Uh, but then many years later, I, uh, it hit me that that can't be literally true. You can burn uh, or salt something with salt. You can burn someone with fire, but you cannot literally salt anyone or anything with fire. So I thought, well, that's obviously metaphorical. So what does that symbolize? And, it hit me that it symbolized purification. As I looked at the Old Testament, how salt was used and how fire is used. And for example, under the law of Moses, they had to salt the sacrifice with salt and sacrifice them on the altar of fire. There we have the mixing of salt and fire. And uh, so Jesus took those two metaphors and mixed them and stating the purpose of Gehenna hell, Mark 9.49. So it hit me that symbolized purification. Then I started looking for translations that might authenticate that to see if any other person saw that. Well, it's interesting that other translations, almost all of them had salted with fire. And uh, some like even the uh, Living Bible, it's very paraphrastic, has salted with fire. The uh, NIV, International Version, that's the best-selling English translation now, has salted with fire. I think that's really disingenuous uh, because I think they're really afraid to translate it as it obviously is because people only think they're liberals or so on and not want to have anything to do with their Bible. So I did find the Good News Bible, today's English version, was translated as everyone will be purified by fire. And that's I mean, what Jesus said. And at that point, I really felt so relieved and uh, of all the fear I'd experienced and I burst into tears. I was in feelings of mad, sad, and glad. Uh, mad, angry, it taken me so many years, I was at midlife, my mid-40s, 
And all those years I lived in fear of eternal damnation, prayed as a child God would take my life before my 12th birthday because that was the magic age of accountability. Before 12, if you died, you went to heaven automatically. After 12, you had to accept Christ and be good enough to make it and not lose your salvation. And you could uh, lose your salvation as easily as going to a school dance or there's any number of things, even not doing a good deed or uh, thinking a bad thought, uh, lusting in your heart. If you never had sex, if you thought about it, that was the same as that. And God would damn you to hell for lusting in your heart. So having a sip of beer or a glass of wine would send you straight to hell. So uh, I was so angry that it took it had taken me so long, but again, so thankful that better late than never. That after I had it, and then I thought, well, almost everyone will want to know this truth, at least listen and decide, make up one's mind whether this has any authenticity. I found out that virtually no one wanted to hear it. Uh, as soon as people heard that, they believe Jesus is going to save everyone. They said, oh my goodness, you, know, you don't believe in hell, do you? Even if I said, I do believe in hell, but the fire is not literal fire and it's not uh, forever. Well, you don't believe in hell, do you? So, Because they had always heard the Bible, that everyone in church, that the church has always taught eternal punishment. So they weren't at all open to that. So I ended up getting condemned as a heretic by that denomination. And then I left and... Uh, to survive, I sold insurance for a while. Then I got a job working in a rehab center for uh, drug addicts. And then I became a uh, uh, psychotherapist in a uh, Christian uh, host- in a psychiatric hospital in a Christian therapy unit. Because I am a licensed professional counselor, board certified counselor, and a uh, board certified chaplain. So of course I had the credentials to get other jobs and, and get by and to survive financially. And get to the point where I finally wrote the three books that I've written to help as many other people as possible.